Hi, Jules Gunn here. Uh, today's video, we're taking the spindle out of the HLV on its way to the HLV CNC conversion. Uh, I've done it already, I've videoed it. Uh, ultimately, this is what it's going to look like at the end. And uh, that is the big lump of the spindle just there. So, talk you through it bit by bit, show you what's involved. I uh, hope you like it. If you do, remember, like and subscribe, help me out. Love to hear your comments as well. Cheers. So we're down in the guts of the machine now and uh, looking to take that belt off there and to do so you have to remove that nut or bolt there and then raise this big platform that holds the motor. Big old heavy lump of a motor. I have to raise that to slip that off so that then we can get in to there and uh, start fiddling around with the uh, with the variable drive unit. So I'll come back to you once I've got this off. Okay. Sorry about the bad view. So we're up under here, and that's the uh, variable drive unit. As you uh, twist this handle, that dual pulley mechanism moves up and down and these these outer edges here and here and here are meant to open and close so the belt essentially makes contact with uh, different diameters of that pulley as you can see on my mine's stuck open so that's not boding well but what I've got to do now is raise that up. You can see it moves up and down when you twist it. But I've got to raise it up so I can get that high enough for the other belt to come off. And once that other belt's off, we can drop it down and you can get that pin out and get the pulley out. Which will mean that this belt will be able to be removed or pulled out of the inspection case, inspection hole at the back. So I'm just going to raise that up and come back to you. So you see now, better lighting, put the, put the torch on the video camera. There, if you see, these, these are meant to move, they're meant to be variable. See, that one's really thin and that one's really thick. Maybe when the belt pinches on that one, Maybe when this belt is forced in, it wedges. And then maybe the two outside ones are the, are the fixed ones. Uh, so maybe it's not rooted. I thought it might be spring-loaded, but it seems that it's just simpler than that. Anyway, we can now, I think, drop that. further down, and the looks of things there, we've got a set screw there, which is holding that shaft in, and I bet that's going to be bloody heavy and bloody awkward, so I'm going to take that out and see if I can manage to do it without dropping it on my head. So we've got the uh, variable drive, actually it moves quite well. And you can see it moves from there all the way back to there. So what happens is when the belt's at the top, so you've got maximum belt there, that one sits right at the bottom. And as you adjust it with the handle, which raises it up and down, and then this the sheaves push this belt to the top and that belt to the bottom. So you get infinitely different drives on it rather than having to change belts so it's uh, pretty good so we're now at the point now where we can reach in and this is the original belt 
You can see it's completely different to that one. That one's a lot thinner. It's not the right size. Well, not the right size by a long chalk. So this one looks to be 24 wide by 8 by 940. This one's, assuming that one's the original one, is. Let's say 28 or more. Let's have a look. Mm. No type of measuring. Oh, there we go. Measuring implementation here. That's 20, 25 and a bit, so that's an inch by 10 mil. And that's what I heard they were meant to be. There's this. By the time it's crunched down. So there's not that, that much in it. Probably because of the taper on the side, they're not straight edges, that's why. Silly me. Silly me, so yeah, but anyway, this belt can then be pulled out here, like that. And we can remove those three bolts there. And then once we've got the gears lined up on there, you'll see they're in place with the lever. I think it's a simple job of tapping that out and hopefully the bearings all come out in one like good little bearings and don't shatter into a million pieces because if they do I hear it's about 300 quid and I only paid 450 quid for the lathe. So that's where we're at, at the moment I'll come back to you once I've done a little bit more. So next job we're in here on the pulley and we have to find That set screw there. And we have to undo it. This is too small. I'll we'll try another one. That's better. <clears throat> Bloody hell, that's tight. Apparently, these have the set screw on top of the set screw, but it looks like mine's just got the set screw. There is meant to be a holding or a locking set screw on top of that. So let's turn this around. Ah, uh, you see there, this one's a lot closer to the top. So this one has a hole all the way through it. So you just have to put the put the Allen key in. A little bit. Not all the way through. And then you can either go all the way through with the next one and they might 
I've just put two set of screws on top of each other. Yeah, there we go. And then you've got the other one. 